Hi, this PowerPoint is on central pattern generators and the role that they play in the TRE process. The concept of central pattern generators was given to us by Dr. Riccardo Cassiani Ingoni in his chapter entitled Central Pattern Generators in Tremor Genesis, and it is in the recent TRE book entitled Shake It Off Naturally. So let's look at what are central pattern generators. Central pattern generators are networks of neurons located along the spine. They are inside the gray matter in the center of the spinal column. So we do not see these. These have to be seen under a microscope. But they are simply a network of neurons in the gray matter in the center of the spinal column. They move themselves up and down the spine through a process called crosstalk. In the science of neurology and physiology, the activation of central pattern generators can give TRE a more precise and professional explanation as to why there are so many different movement patterns, varying frequencies, and amplitudes of tremors in the TRE process. Now let's look at the features of the central pattern generator movement. First, it's important to understand that central pattern generators organize rhythmic muscle activity autonomously. This means that they can activate without the brain. In technical terms, this means the supraspinal structures or the structures located above the spine, which are the brain, are not necessary for basic motor patterns. The rhythmic patterns that we see in the body during the TRE process are produced by neuronal circuits contained entirely in the gray matter of the spinal cord. Now, the central pattern generators can be activated by descending signals from the brain. However, the descending signals from the brain cannot produce the rhythmic pattern evoked in the spinal cord. And sensory input is the same way. Spinal central pattern generator networks do not require sensory input from the body, but are strongly regulated by their input. Additional features of the central pattern generator movement. Whenever central pattern generators work together, they produce the rhythmic vibrations that we see at the spinal level in TRE. Since these neural networks are connected to muscles and fascia, the central pattern generators are also what actually produce the rhythmic patterns of activity or movement we see in the muscles during the tremor response. Therefore, central pattern generators are more of a product of reflex neurology, which happens at the spinal level rather than the brain level. By including our awareness of central pattern generators to the TRE process, we can refine our professional exploration of the tremoring process. The working hypotheses of adding central pattern generators to the TRE process is that the tremors we see along the spine in TRE are the visible output of central pattern generator activity in the spinal cord, not in the brainstem. This output can be autonomous or separate from the higher centers of the brain. However, to a certain degree, these tremors can be modulated or regulated by the emotional and cognitive processes of the brain, as we already know. This means that the central pattern generators 
are both independent from and interdependent with both the brain and the body. The way that we can tie this into previous slides that you have in your training is by way of the transcortical loop. Previously, we have been teaching that the transcortical loop is the process where afferent neurons carry nerve impulses from the muscles of the peripheral nervous system to the brain in the central nervous system. The brain then responds with efferent neurons, which carry nerve impulses from the brain of the central nervous system to the muscles of the peripheral nervous system. This is what we have originally been teaching. We are going to refine this teaching a bit more, and it will look like this. Central pattern generators and the transcortical loop. Once again, we have afferent neurons that carry nerve impulses from the muscles, and this time they carry them to the central pattern generators located in the spinal column, not to the brain. And the central pattern generators in the spine carry the nerve impulses from the central pattern generators in the spinal column to the muscles. So we can have the transcortical loop successfully completed by a communication that goes directly from muscle to spinal column and back to muscle again without needing to go through the brain. This inclusion of central pattern generators into the TRE process helps to reinforce the natural process of intrinsic reorganization, meaning the body is doing the reorganization within itself, independent of cognition. So the neurogenic tremors in TRE seem to help the spine and myofascial patterns to achieve a higher level of flexibility, adaptability, and stability in the physical structure as well as the nervous system. It appears that with the continual activation of the central pattern generators, a reorganizing behavior emerges in the individual's spine, nervous system, and myofascial system. Because of the advancements of the science of neurophysiology, our most successful and accurate research of the tremors in TRE will most likely come from the activation of the central pattern generators in the spinal column and not in the brainstem. Electromyography, or EMGs, can best measure the electrical activity of the neurogenic tremor stimulation using central pattern generator measurements. The most recent article I could find in terms of research regarding central pattern generators, which is quite good, comes from the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. The title is The Network Spinal Wave as a Central Pattern Generator. And you can find this article on the internet. It is free download. Just type in the title of the article. And those of you who are, who are interested in central pattern generators will find this very helpful. So there, in a nutshell, is the explanation of central pattern generators and how they can be useful for us in the TRE process. It is not necessary for people to know this because it still works without the knowledge. However, if we are going to go into research or potentially speak about this to neurologists or physiologists, then this would be helpful information to understand.